Hi, I'm Jo- Hi, I'm Johan Purple, and today we'll be talking about the film industry during the 1920s and Douglas Fairbanks's Little Baby Feet. In 1892, the cinematograph, a device which could rapidly capture pictures and display them, was developed by the Lumiere brothers. Many artists, such as Georges Méliès or the asshole Thomas Edison, developed interest in such a device. Flash forward 30 years later to the Roaring Twenties, America's drunk party before the eventual, very depressing hangover. The film industry was at an all-time boom. To illustrate, here are some stats. During the 1920s, as the fifth largest industry in America at a whopping $2 billion, the film business had 20 major studios and an average of 80 million attendees per year. The average cost of a movie ticket being 10 to 20 cents, equivalent to about $1.25 or $2.50 in today's money. A large part of this popularity was its appeal to both the upper and lower classes. In its beginning with the one-screen movie theaters, Films were usually seen as the poor man's method of entertainment, while the rich attended the theater, which, actually, many actors of film came from. Gradually, the popularity of film increased so much that actors began receiving huge amounts of media attention, which gave rise to the eventual stars, some of which being comedians Charlie Chaplin and Harold Lloyd, dramatic actor Douglas Fairbanks, America's darling Mary Pickford, who is definitely f***ing Fairbanks, and my personal favorite, old stone-faced Buster Keaton, who literally broke his back and neck in order to get the stunts right, and only found out about it decades later from a doctor. The studios were always busy, releasing an average of 800 films a year, compared to today when studios rarely make over 500. Due to the lack of the invention of sound, films had to be purely visual. This led to people preferring comedies over dramas, although both would do well at the box office with a big star attached. As the business got bigger, there was a rise in epics. Huge films with huge budgets and huge stars and huge egos. One of them being D.W. Grant, who made one of the most racist films I've ever seen, Birth of a Nation. And later, as an apology note to say, hey guys, I'm still cool, made Intolerance. Along with the theater, literature had big ties to film as well, with many adaptations of Ben-Hur, Sherlock Holmes, and The Great Gatsby, all three of them. With the boom in popularity and money, it seemed that these times would never end. The stock market crash many studios went under. The previous 80 million attendees dropped down to 50 million and the price of a movie ticket rose to 27 cents. However, films continued to be made as the poor saw the movie theater as there still. And that's really what is so important about this. Oh, it's time for the mystery document? The rules are simple. I guess the name of the person who wrote the mystery document, or I get shocked by no one because I'm actually making this in my mom's basement. <laughs> Our invention can be exploited for a certain time as a scientific curiosity, but apart from that, it has no commercial value whatsoever. Uh, my sixth sense for lack of support and encouragement from fatherly figures rings true. This is most definitely Auguste Lumiere. Lumiere was very much in doubt on the future of film, even with him being its creator. And many others saw it the same way, seeing it as only a passing fad. Throughout its 125 years of existence, it's been continually disregarded as a mere pastime or gimmick, yet it's continually shown itself to be more. Shown proudly in the first celebration of the art form itself, the 1929 Oscars 27 years later. And as always, never watch this again. <laughs>